Well, I, I think um, when I'm in Hahui, of course, the first thing I'm going to talk about is Minera XR and what they're doing at Kachari. Uh, I am very positive about what's happening at Kachari. Obviously, if anybody follows me on social media, they know that I've lo been long uh, a very bullish on Gangfen and bullish on Lithium Americas. I think the combination here and how they're executing uh, is impressive. Uh, I was up there last November when they were filling the first pond. Uh, I, I was with them today. Uh, I had lunch with them today and uh, you know my ex-boss from uh, FMC Lithium is now the CEO of uh, LAC so I think that bodes well. They have somebody with an industry heavyweight uh, running the operation. So first of all, I think Kachari is going to produce, it's going to produce in a timely basis. And then when I look at the other happenings around Argentina, um, you know, hopefully Livent is able to get their expansion going. Um, but then we get into the trouble uh, that the market's having right now, and that's with financing. And you have two other world-class projects in this country that need financing. You know, Galaxy's looking for a sugar daddy, and I don't know how sugar daddy uh, translates. They're looking for money, and uh, but they already have $280 million I got from the sale of the tenements, so I would look Galaxy in the eye and say, what are you waiting for? Uh, Neolithium is, is still, you know, we, uh, my podcast partner and I were up um, at three queues several weeks ago, and then we saw the pilot plant, we saw what they're doing. It was impressive also. So everything looks good for Argentina, but the financing has to happen. After the royalty was implemented in Chile that Liven is actually the low-cost carbonate producer in the world uh, in Oricobre second. And, and I believe when Kachari starts, they will probably replace Liven as a low-cost producer. But no matter whether the Atacama has a royalty or not, the Argentina products are, projects are competitive in carbonate because the hard, the hard rock cost is still higher to get the carbonate. Where hard rock has an advantage is in the hydroxide because the lowest cost hydroxide, not all, not all hard rock hydroxide, but the lowest cost hard rock hydroxide is, is lower cost than, than what the brine people can produce because they have to, uh, they have to produce carbonate first and then convert. This is a very confusing time because I actually believe that the only lithium that's in oversupply is just spodumene concentrate. And the battery industry can't use spodumene concentrate. The battery industry has to have a lithium chemical, so it needs either lithium carbonate, in this point in time, either lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide. I do not think that, that those products are in oversupply. But what I, I think we've seen a, a unique situation situation where you've had the so-called spot price in China go down and create a narrative that you know Morgan Stanley was right and the price is going to go to 7,000. I don't believe the cost curve justifies that but I, I think that when you go 10 years out I mean we're, we're looking at growth from 270,000 tons in 2018 to many people think a million tons in 2025. I personally see it as a little lower than that, but by any measure it's either 600,000 or 700,000 of tons of capacity have to be added. And you can't wait until 2023 to start building these projects to deliver it in 2025. So I, I think that my message to Argentina is, you know, do everything you can because every bit of lithium carbonate you can make is going to find a home in the market. And I would say the same thing on the hard rock side. So I see no competition between the two types of lithium. They each have their relative strength, but Australia needs to do what they can do in partnership with conversion capacity in China and the Atacama and the various projects around Argentina. We need all of it.